All right, I'm just gonna let it run while he's sharpening his chain. So he's uh, being sharpened at 10 degrees. He's a below big file, 730 seconds. See this milled a couple logs. You can actually see here, you can see the burr on the top. That's that one. I just did this one too. I'll show you the top plate angle. It's 10 degrees. And this is what the tooth behind it looks like, so that you know, for reference. And this is milled two logs since it's been sharpened. Two of these white oaks. So I'm just going to whip through this chain. No magic, really. Uh, I am going to check the rakers, uh, but I don't think they, it was a little grabby before, so I don't think they need to be done. Don't need to count strokes. I'm just sharpening out the gullet. Here, that was the one that was just that you just saw that was dirty. If you can see the hook angle there, it's not that bad. But that was the one that was just dirty that I showed you before. It's prickly sharp now on the top plate. The, the light's not good enough to see the top plate, I don't think. Also, what I do one um, is when you freehand sharpen a lot, you kind of look down at the chain and see if you're starting to get uneven. It does look to me like the cutters on the left are a little longer than the cutters on the right. So, regardless, when I do the left side, I'm gonna hit them a little harder. You can see this one here and this one here, and it still cuts perfectly straight. I don't know if you can see. Even after all that, you see the finish on this log is pretty smooth, so this chain's cutting beautiful, even though it's dull, or a little dull, it's not crazy dull, it's still pulling through pretty good. But just want to show you there's no real magic to it. And it doesn't take really long to do uh, 36 inch. Last couple strokes are just across the cutter. The rest of it's to clean out the gullet. And I'm making sure they're all at 10 degrees, which I can. I do this a lot, so I can see it. I'm not cutting on the back stroke. should look like, why they cut, how they cut. It's the single most misunderstood thing about running a chainsaw. Why 10 degrees? Because anything from 10 to 0 is a rip tooth profile. It's ripping the, the fibers out the long way. Cutting across them actually, not noodling, not ripping them out the long way. Like across the end of the fibers and it makes dust. A lot of people ask about that too. Oh, I get noodles when I do that. Not when you mill, you don't. When you cut with the grain, you do. You're not cutting with the grain when you're milling. You're cutting across the end grain.
when I'm going across the top plate, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for the top plate to clean up and become a straight line like that. We haven't sharpened all the way up to the cutter edge if it doesn't. Don't have to count your strokes. The size of the tooth is regardless if you set your stops, drags, rakers with a progressive raker gauge, it doesn't matter what length your teeth are. The most important thing is that your teeth are sharp. Especially when you're milling white oak. a little balance between speed of cut and smoothness of cut. If I cut it, if you zoom at zero, you'll get a smoother cut, but it cuts lower. More drag on the chain. This is giving you what's called flame, a little bit of flame. That's what the 10 degrees is, is flame. On a saw, on a saw tube. The flame creates a little shear angle. Shear angle, as you can imagine, that does, where are you looking? Okay, I'll explain flame. Here's a piece of wood. When you're ripping, you're cutting this way. Okay? If you add a little angle to your tooth, the flame, it cuts easier. If you add a lot of angle, a lot of flame, it cuts even easier still. Okay, so this is straight across zero degrees, trying to push it through the wood. This is around 25, what a cross-cut angle would be. And it goes through the wood way easier. The problem is, is that the more flame you put on it, the more the tooth gets dragged. I don't know if you can see this, hopefully you can. The tooth gets dragged because of the angle of the tooth, like this right here. The tooth gets dragged this way when it's in the wood. And this one gets dragged this way, and this one gets dragged this way, and this one gets dragged this way. With zero flame, they resist going side to side as much. That's what gives you your smoothness of finish. When If you did this with a crosscut configuration, which would be 25 degrees, let's say like that, these would be going sideways a lot, and it would give you a real rough finish. But that's what the flame does. The flame gives you a little teeny bit of easier cutting at 10 degrees versus zero, a little bit more speed, and still a pretty smooth cut, and that's just what people milling the chainsaws have found out over a long time of doing it. If you don't want to listen to those that came before you, that's, I think that's great. You can have your own ideas and talk shit and sound stupid and say, oh, I can eat. My, my chainsaw no faster than 10 degrees. I mean, it's zero. Okay, whatever, Chester. I can tell by how smoothly the file's passing through the tooth if it's sharp. Because I've done this so many times. Right now, I can tell, you can feel the burrs in it. Taught because you file until a file goes smooth like this. And it's not hitting anything. That's all I was taught. Since then, I've learned so much about filing teeth. It's crazy being a sawyer. Now I'm going to do the other side, and when I do the other side, I like to work straight into the saw. Like this, make sure you guys can see. Yeah, it's pretty good angle. 
I always start at my painted tooth. This is probably one of those times where you wouldn't have to, that you're going to be able to see the teeth, but see, I can feel the damage in this tooth dragging the file on it. Somewhere in the gull, it's rolled over a little bit. When you get rolling, you can just roll through, especially if you're all close to 10. This one's a little bit less, than, I mean, a little more than 10. The reason the teeth are shorter on this side is because I can, I'm more efficient pushing into the tooth from this side like this. This tooth's nice and smooth. I see the cutting edge clean up against the file. Right now there's a gap. You can't see it, but there's a gap between the cutting edge and the file because the cutting edge has been worn back. And as I sharpen, that gap closes until the cutting edge is dragging across the file with no gap like it is now. That's when it's sharp. As long as there's no damage to the chain, you know, it's rolled over or something, or you hit a rock, then you gotta get the damage out. so you can see how that cutting edge is, as the gullet files back and the, the profile fits the file and how the cutting edge comes right up against the file nice and straight and then you want to make real straight lines to get that tooth line nice and straight if you go like this then you're going to round the tooth which isn't a big deal there's still a cut line like that just i try to make mine pretty straight So put my hip against the chain to keep it from moving.
And I'm taking some of the hook out of the hook angle too because of this white oak. I'm pulling up on the file just slightly. As you can see, I just came out. So I'm filing the tooth a little higher. The tooth edge will be a little more durable that way. As you can see, I just came out again. And your hook angle is called rake angle in, uh, in tooth filing of saw plates, saw teeth, it's rake angle. And the more forward rake, the more aggressive. So the more hook, the more aggressive the chain's going to cut. The more that it's straight up and down, the more durable the cutting edge will be. But the slower it'll cut. If you guys are cutting firewood in a dirty pile of wood, I would file my chains no more than 20 degrees of flame. I wouldn't even do 25. 20 degrees of flame and use a big ass file so you keep your hook down. The bigger the, the bigger the file, the less hook angle you'll get. If you don't mess around in the gullet like I do size of your file will create the hook. So you want to use a big file, even on your small size, if you're running little like a 200, like a 200T, perfect example. A 200T, if I want to keep, if you were cutting firewood with this, which most guys are climbing with it, but a 200T, even with this little chain, I can file, if the 730 seconds will fit in there, which in this case it won't, sometimes they'll be filed back enough, and when they're filed back enough, you can file it with 730 seconds, but I'll file it with the biggest file that'll fit in between the ripper and the tooth. Doesn't matter what the chain says. That'll give you a real durable cutting edge and not give you a ton of hook. If you want it to be real aggressive, then go with a smaller file like a 530 seconds on a big chain like this. Get way into the gullet, create a lot of hook, and it'll really dig. But this chain's done. Yeah, I hit that one. I'll just make sure that I finished it while I'm talking here. going to check the rakers real quick. Rakers, drag, stops, whatever you want to call them. I use a progressive raker gauge. Looks like this. It's the only way to go. It, sharp, it does each tooth. It does each raker to the tooth. Not a bridge across like one of these. Like one of these. This one bridges across. You file in the gap right here like that um, those will average the rakers out and then if you get wonky with your tooth size your chain will tend to cut crooked I uh, do them all at hardwood setting and it looks like they're low as it is it's not even touching it check both sides quick it's touching this side just a hair I'm gonna roll through this chain real quick not really touching that side You can tell the side that I do more because I've sharpened now twice since I've been here on site. The side that I uh, sharpen more efficiently, I'm touching the rakers on the side. The other side, I'm not. This also slopes the rake. You can see the angle. It slopes the rakers off, which is what the manufacturer suggests because when your chain is cutting, as this tooth engages the wood, your chain does this. If the rakers are flat across, the front side of the raker ends up high. So your rakers need to be sloped off in this direction so that when that happens, you don't get a false raker height. And say, oh, my chain isn't cut. I got it sharp. I did the rakers, but it still doesn't cut. It's because of geometry, not because of you missed a step. You just didn't do it right. Rakers have to have slope to them, especially on a longer chain. On a smaller chain, it doesn't really move around as much. But on a big, huge bar and a big chain, it moves around a lot. That's why I have burrs on this bar because this chain does loops when you're cutting with it and when you're hitting the throttle. 
no matter how tight you set it. These don't need much at all. When you wear out a raker file, you can do some with the front. This is an old file that I file that I sharpen with vinegar. That uh, seems to last forever. Some of the new files you buy stock, they wear out really quick. This one's lasted forever. It was all rusty, and I left it in vinegar for like three or four days, and it's sharp as hell, and it's staying sharp. so that they're the same, or in relation to two. So each tooth is taking the same amount of wood. That's what these rakers do. These rakers left this tooth, and it's cutting. The distance between the raker and the top of the tooth is how thick a chip the tooth is taking. When you use this, it makes that every tooth is taking the same amount. milling I always use the hardwood setting because it's the smoothest and less gra least grabby makes milling more pleasant these uh, raker gauges do need to be replaced I'll show you what one looks like that's white in a second that one too and I didn't even touch the one in front of it. Didn't even touch it. You can't do both sides of the chain as you're seeing from one side. What you want to do is the ones that are leaning away from you like this one will file nice and smooth. These ones sometimes will chatter and what you need to do is you go across them and diagonally like that. This file is actually so sharp it just takes, takes them right off. up in the chain you won't have to do this very much and it won't be such a pain in the ass when you take them down a mile it sucks like this one's going to come down quite a bit all right so that's done this is what a file looks like i mean a guide looks like that's white you can see through, through the hardening on it. This one's pretty new. I keep it around because I haven't even touched the softwood side because I never use it. I'm not racing. This is what one looks like. This is another one that's the same thing, but it's in a Husqvarna guide. And this is what it looks like when they get wiped. Because you use, it's so thin here for me using it as a gauge that it's almost broken off. Just in case of emergency. So that's it. We're ready to go back to work. And uh, I will. Uh, I'll video a cut when we come back. You see how it cuts. I'm gonna go grab some lunch real quick. Come back, get set up on this log, and uh, go back to milling. So have a good one.